me by checking out those links down below, uh, either my website, kittensweightsintero.com, checking out a witchy shop that James and I own called Desert Cauldron over on Etsy. That link is down below. Maybe signing up for the newsletter, which I put out on the first of every month. And that is the only email that I send. So I don't play the spam game, but you can check out the newsletter, our witchy newsletter down below as well. And yeah, how are you guys today? How's your weekend? Any plans? Do you guys have any plans for this upcoming week? Uh, as many of you have seen by our title, uh, we are going to dive a little bit into our friend Cannabis 420, as uh, many of our friends will be celebrating uh, this upcoming Saturday. So I thought it would be fun. Uh, we're going to be doing a little tarot spread, a DIY tarot spread, actually, with your help um, <laughs> for 420. Um, and then uh, we are going to be creating an herbal smoke. So I have my herbs here and talk a little bit about herbal smokes. And no, not just talking about the cannabis kind. <laughs> I'm talking about like flowers and, and things like that. So we'll talk a little bit about that. I got my mortar and pestle ready. And uh, yeah, OK. So let's see who's here. All right, Angela's here. Hello, hello. Lisa, hello. Oh my goodness, Lisa says, I'm well. Thanks, Angela. Thanks, hope all is well with you. Peg is here. She says, grand rising. Uh, Angela says, all is amazing. I'm super happy. Been working on a story all week and have been relaxing this weekend. Yay, John is here. Hello, John. Paradise of Pearls. <laughs> Lisa says, I love the jacket. Actually, this is my little um, my little dress, actually. Uh, you know, it's feeling kind of preppy today. Actually, inspired by you. <laughs> uh, Lisa has a Instagram account, and I'm always following her musings and the things that she creates uh, over there on the Instagrams and sharing uh, beautiful things. And she had this really cool, like preppy, like plaid skirt on and I'm a sucker for plaid. So <laughs> I was like, I want to wear plaid <laughs> and it's warm enough out where I can actually wear my dresses and short sleeves. Uh, so it was crazy. We went from, it was 58 degrees, which is kind of what it's been, you know, kind of like it's been swinging between a few cold days in the 30s, but then it would go up into the 50s and then the winds would come go back into like the 40s and 30s. Um, and then one day it was like 58, next day 73. And so, yeah, we were all a little, little hot. <laughs> uh, but now it's been in the, the mid 60s, supposed to get up to the upper 70s next week. So I think it's starting to get warm again here up in the mountains but we have this very icy wind so that's why we are indoors today that wind is not only cold but you wouldn't be able to hear me talk anyway so <laughs> so we'll just be indoors that's fine um and we'll we'll have some good fun here uh lisa welcoming in everyone lisa says ah lovely dress thanks Loves to you too, Peg. <laughs> okay, okay, you guys. So um, let's uh, let's start off here. So for those who are new to the channel or watching the replay and haven't really seen our live chats before, we have a weekly poll that comes out usually on Thursdays. And what that poll is for is for you guys to vote on something that you would like to see or a theme during the Sunday live chat, because it's our live chat. You know, we, we all like to come together, have our input. You guys all have beautiful messages and wonderful things to share. And that's why I love this live chat, which by the way, if you are watching the replay, please read the chat. There's a lot of good stuff that's happening in there. And KDS worker is here. Hello. Hello. Okay. So it was, pretty close to a tie. It wasn't in an exact tie, but it was pretty close to a tie. So I figured, what the heck? We'll just do both things. <laughs> and so there, there was uh, four options. I gave it to my YouTube channel page, my Patreon page, my YouTube members. So which, by the way, if you're a YouTube member or a patron, or both, <laughs> then you get extra votes, which means if there's really something that you're aching to see, then you get that little like squeak in extra vote. And actually 
thanks to Patreon and my YouTube members. That's why it was pretty much almost a tie. So um, people were wanting to see how I create herbal smokes because uh, we have that. Um, we were selling them in Desert Cauldron, but Etsy's got a weird thing about selling anything <laughs> smoke uh, on their site. So I sell them actually on my website, kittensweightsandtarot.com. So I have a couple of our like pre-made herbal smokes. Um, and then the one that I'm going to create today, I'll make sure that I make extra. So if there's like anybody that actually wants to purchase this one, let me know. Uh, of course, I will be testing it out, making sure that it is a good smoke. And I do utilize my intuition. I know that there are folks that don't like to smoke anything and that's, you know, totally up to you for me. Um, I go with what my higher self says, and I'm pretty sure my higher self isn't going to put me in any sort of danger. Isn't trying to like take me off this planet. So, <laughs> so that's what I go with. I know that it's can be very difficult sifting through information on the internet, especially if the internet is monitored, uh, and it can be difficult for anything high vibe to be on there. Um, so we have our, our herbs today as well. So we're going to be making that herbal smoke, but we're also going to be doing a 420 tarot spread, which was the other option that everybody had uh, voted on. So it was, it was pretty close. So I was like, what the heck? We'll just do both. So we'll start off with the, um, the tarot spread and we'll use that for our weekly reading. Um, so for that, I want to, I want to do actually like seven questions. So it's like in the form of a <laughs> cannabis leaf. Um, so let me see. Let me just draw that out for you guys for a second. And then you'll see what I'm, what I'm talking about here. I feel like I'm drawing the Adidas symbol. <laughs> uh, maybe that's why Adidas has their symbol. Okay, this is not looking like a <laughs> marijuana leaf, but you get the gist, okay? <laughs> Okay, so we have question one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, okay. All righty. Okay, okay. It could look like the maple leaf actually off the Canadian flag. Sorry to all my Canadian <laughs> friends out there. Okay, not my best work. <laughs> okay, but you see it's got like basically seven leaves. So we're going to do seven questions. And I thought it'd be fun and get, you know, if we got really creative and tried to make the question kind of like a pun or like a in reference to 420, uh, our greenly friends, anything herbal. Uh, so asking questions in that arena, um, but also utilizing the the energy of cannabis because it is it, another, you know, herbal ally that uh, people use for healing and communication with the plant world. Um, so if we could, you know, tailor our questions, I guess, into the realm of like, healing heart opening which is kind of what i feel like cannabis is it is a heart opener not only due to its green color but <laughs> but also like third eye opener crown opener um so you know questions along those lines so let me put down some little numbers here as we can get those questions going for five six and seven all right excellent Okay, and I have my, my green pen here, my green uh, fountain pen. All right, let's see. Katie is saying hello to everyone. John says talk about value. <laughs> Peg said wake and bake. <laughs> says can I get a thumbs up? Angela said the good vibes leaf. Yes, yes. Uh, Peg said currently out of smoke, so please blow it this way. Will do, will do. Katie says, is there a connection between um, psychosis and psychic abilities? Uh, is psychosis really just psychic gifts? Um, you know, I, I think that would be interesting to go into a channeling about, but just going off of what I have learned, and by the way, I'm, <laughs> I, I don't have any like a solidified belief in it. So if you guys want to 
and have some input on it. I do believe that sometimes a psychosis or what uh, our society refers to as mental illness is really just um, people seeing the world from um, a different point of view. So either they're thoroughly looking through their third eye or through their crown chakra, and they just don't see the 3D reality as we see it. Just like, um, you know, when I'm like saying that, you know, I see like nature spirits and, you know, regular spirits and, you know, ETs and things like that, I'm utilizing my third eye, but I'm also well aware that I'm in the 3D world. If I was very ungrounded, let's say, I would probably lose my sense of like 3D world and I would be totally thrust into that 4D world. So partly what I believe it is, is being able to see that 4D realm and that being most of our reality, like let's say we're our, our dream state and our waking state, which, you know, I believe is kind of like a matrix illusion to say that there's two when really it's all one state. But we've been programmed that, you know, we go to sleep for one and we're awake for the other. Um, and that's something that James and I are trying to work on is to bring that, take away that barrier. So basically the two worlds come together and perhaps people with mental illness, those two worlds have already come together. So to us, you know, we'd be like, oh, wow, you know, they're seeing things that I can't see or they're viewing reality from a, a way that I am having difficulty viewing. And that could be that either they're just way more advanced <laughs> and they they can you know they've bridged the gap between those two realities or um the 4d reality is their reality so it makes them disconnected to the 3d reality that they are in you know um and it could be that you know maybe not understanding what they're seeing or understanding the two different realities could put them in a vibration of fear you know, being very scared, especially if the people that are trying to help them are also scared of what they're seeing or perceiving. So that doesn't help pumping more fear into fear. And so if there's that fear vibration, then per perhaps they're be being surrounded, not all of them, but I'm just saying some people, you know, uh, friends and family, you know, who've all at one point or another been diagnosed with, you know, mental illness, which could be anxiety, it could be um, like my cousin, she had what was considered auditory schizophrenia, which I believe she was just hearing 4D, but since it was scary to her and scary to everybody else, they were like, oh, you know, let's give her medication for that, which just kind of made things worse for her. But, um, you know, and, it, and in that, they could be a target for lower astrals. You know, lower astrals love to feed on that fear. And if everybody's scared of what they're perceiving and they're scared of what they're perceiving, then I would say that they'd be a good candidate for the lower astrals to kind of whisper in their ear and continue that fear. Not all the time though. They could be talking to, you know, high vibration beings and angels and things like that. But um, I, I believe that it's, it's not just a 3D thing, you know, because we are spirit beings. I have a hard time believing that anything that's going on with our physical body isn't also going on energetically. Like I have to feel that like I truly, that's what I truly believe that the two things are connected. So whatever is going on energetically is going to have an effect on our 3D body. And if I'm all the way in the ethers all the time, I'm pretty sure that's going to look a certain way in my 3D form. So I don't know. That's, those are my opinions. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Uh, Angela says, which energy is most reaching out to help us open our psychic abilities at this time? Ah, that's a good question for our spread. So which energy is most reaching out to help us? Which energy? is most reaching out to help us. Oh, there it is. Um, open our psychic abilities at this time. Abilities at this time. That is a great question for this spread. 
Um, John says, I lean towards there being a spectrum on this topic. Angela says, I saw your Bashar channeling. Bashar scared me a little. Something felt very not okay and spooky about whoever that entity was. He reminded me of the villain in the Dreamcatcher book by Stephen King. Well, it could be that uh, sometimes when we feel that way, it's just because it's a vibration that's different from ours. Uh, Katie, I said, thank you. That is what I'm thinking. But if it is said this to my colleagues, they would frown upon it. Well, yeah, I mean, different worlds, different worlds. Katie, I said, thank you. I'm not a fan of the term mental illness, but I work in westernized healthcare. Exactly. Like, I... I don't really feel good about that term either. But I, um, and then Angela says, I feel you and KDS on this. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting topic. And one, like I said, it would be pretty, pretty interesting to channel, I think. And it would be interesting to see what entity comes through, you know, feeling that it has a, a good understanding of um, what that means for us here in 3D. Okay. So um, Angela came up with a very good first question for our little, uh, <laughs> our little leaf uh, spread, our little pot leaf spread. So um, let's see, any other questions? Trying to relate it to herbal allies, our herbal friends, maybe heart opening, crown opening, expansion understanding. Maybe if you can get a little clever phrasing it in a cannabis type way. Uh, let's see. Hmm. What question would I come up with? While I ponder a question, you guys start rolling in your questions. I'll make sure I write them down. Uh, let's see. Hmm. How can we incorporate the energy of cannabis? Uh, into our daily life. So meaning, not meaning that we have to like smoke it or ingest it every day, but the energy of it. How can we incorporate the energy of it in our day to day? Okay, how can we incorporate the energy of cannabis into our day to day. Okay. Um, and just says, I have Asperger's and anxiety. Uh, getting open to spirit helped me out of depression too. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, you know, in my family, like especially on my, my dad's side of the family, um, being open to things like spirit was something that wasn't quite understood. So, you know, and westernized medicine didn't quite understand it. So there were some practices and things that were applied to their care that I would say wasn't very good for their physical bodies or their mental health, even though they're meaning to help their mental health. Um, and it was once they just kind of embraced that, you know what, maybe doctors don't have a an answer for this. And uh, they just kind of went into spirit themselves and it seemed like they were getting better like they were less afraid and more i don't know felt more like themselves you know when they started getting away from like the medications and the and the dogma and the you know the terminology and you have this you are in this box you know instead of you know i'm a spirit having a spirit experience you know <laughs> a spiritual experience so um, let's see, Peg says, everyone talks of the pineal gland, but what does the pituitary gland have to do with ascension and what blocks are we missing? Says, don't really know how to form it into a question. Where is my wingman Russ? <laughs> I know, where is he? Okay, so let's see, how could we put this into, um, mm. okay, what is, We'll, we'll say it for us and individuals. So that way, when we pull our cards individually for ourselves, we could do this. So um, how does my pineal gland factor into my ascension? So yeah, how does my pineal gland factor into my ascension? Let's do it. Okay, how does my pineal gland 
factor into my ascension. Okay. Um, Angela says, uh, if someone tries to say you go in this box, takes the box and fills it with crystals and burns some sage to get rid of the bad vibes. <laughs> um, and then Katia says, do edible herbs have different impact than smoking it? Oh, pituitary, not pineal. Uh, all right. I will remove that. Okay. So let's put uh, pituitary. Okay. Now, there we go. Pituitary gland. Okay, um, okay, so Kadius was wondering about the edible versus smoking. Um, in my experience, I feel that, um, how do I want to say it? I feel when I ingest, like through eating, um, our special little herbal friend, I feel it more in my entire body. Like I, I feel it from my head down to my toes, and I feel that it lasts a lot longer, you know, where, a, a, let's say a 10 milligrams in a cookie versus 10, well, technically, I guess, sort of 10 milligrams smoking um, is just different. One has a much longer lasting effect. Um, um, smoking it, I would say is more of a heady experience where I don't totally feel it in my whole body. It's more just up here. Um, and I tend to zone out more <laughs> if that's a thing where I'm just like, it's like, I don't know, <laughs> I forget that I have a 3d body and I, I'm talking about like, if I, if I smoked a copious amount, um, I, <laughs> I forget that I'm in my 3d body and I'm more seeing things more viscerally that I usually do when I'm channeling or when I'm doing readings for people, or I'm just connecting to people's energy in general, it just seems like that times a hundred. So it's like, if I'm, if I know there's a spirit there, I, I totally feel everything about that spirit. Um, if I'm doing readings, like the readings are so going off in places that my 3D mind could <laughs> never even fathom. Um, if I have an edible, however, uh, I would say that I'm more wanting to do something a little bit more physical so like i want to go out into a hike in the forest i want to go talk to the trees which i normally do i don't need you know um any sort of herb to get me to go talk to the trees i'll do it anyway but i just feel that i'm more open because for me i feel that it moves more of my ego off to the side just like when i'm channeling except you know that's that's the difference is like when i channel my ego goes bye-bye somewhere it goes to sleep that way I can be just a vessel for the energy that needs to speak. When I'm just operating as I am now, of course, I have a lot of my ego here with me so that I can communicate with you guys so that I have the words to communicate so that like my brain can think as I'm like, you know, thinking of questions for our spread. And so I need my ego for that, um, as well as my my higher self, my higher self in here is speaking too. Um, but when I have that particular herb in my system, I feel like the ego doesn't quite understand what's going on. So it moves off to the side, just like when I channel. And so when people are talking to me, it, it feels like you're talking to my, well, higher self channeled through my, my vessel, if that makes any sense. Um, so it's just, uh, I feel like I'm speaking more from my heart. I feel like I'm speaking more as my soul than I am as just like Tara with all of her, you know, upbringing and her programming and her, you know, you know, all, all of that, or <laughs> her human perspective. So for me, that's the difference, you know, but I know everybody has different experiences and different ways of looking at it. That's just from one anecdotal point of view, which is me. So, <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go back here. Ruby it says, is Mary Jane assisting us with ascension? Let's put that as a question. Um, maybe how can Mary Jane assist us with ascension? Okay, how can Mary Jane assist us with ascension? By the way, Ruby Slippers, hello. <laughs> good to see you. 
Oh my gosh, Steph, it is Jeanelle Dufin Modern, a spiritual Steph. That is my chica, my sister from another mister. Oh my gosh, it is so good to see you, girl. And just said, what message is Mother Guy trying to tell us when we connect with our herbal allies? That is a great question. Okay, what message is Mama Guy trying to tell us? What message is Mama Gaia trying to tell us? Trying to tell us when we connect to our herbal allies. When we connect to our herbal allies. Fantastic question. Uh, John says, it's metabolized different when you smoke versus eat. Yes, yes. And Peg says, I saw a picture of chakras and it said the throat chakra was pituitary and the crown was pineal. It was the first time I ever saw this growth gland mentioned. Interesting. And then Katie says, my throat chakra is the one that gets stuck most. Ah, hmm. Interesting. Okay. All right. We have room for two more questions. You guys are doing great on the questions front. We almost have all the leaves of our little cannabis filled out for us. So questions six and seven. And Angela says, ah, hugs, Katius. I wish you clearing of your throat chakra from Archangel Gabriel. Uh, today, may he clear your blockages so you can speak freely and clearly every day. Amen. Yeah. And who knows, maybe, um, Maybe tapping into the energy of cannabis, uh, cannabis, um, and as asking it to assist in that opening of the throat chakra, and maybe even showing you, um, show me where um, this blockage is coming from. Um, actually, that's making me think of a question that we could have for this spread. Um, hmm. Maybe in what way can cannabis assist us in unblocking various chakras? There we go. We'll use the chakra question. Okay, so in what way can cannabis assist us in Blocking various chakras. All right. Okay. Uh, Katie says, Ah, you rock, Angela. Angela says, What is the true energy of cannabis? How does it want to be known? And then she says, Ah, I'm blushing. So do you, Katie. S. You could do this. I believe in you. John says, how can I embody the wisdom of this plant friend? That is a great question. Okay. How can I embody the wisdom of this plant friend? Embody the wisdom of this plant friend. All right, I believe that is all seven. Okay, so let me read the questions to you. Um, thank you, everybody who gave us some wonderful questions. Peg, Angela, uh, KDS Worker helped us out. Uh, also our buddy, John, and everybody else. Uh, wonderful, wonderful questions. Okay, so let me read them off to you. You guys go ahead, grab your deck or your intuition. <laughs> You know, you can just channel these downloads, uh, your runes, pendulum, whatever it is that you guys want to use. Uh, and I'll read the questions and then we'll go through them one by one. And this will be kind of like our, our weekly reading. <laughs> okay, so first one, which energy is most reaching out to us to help us in our psychic abilities at this time? Okay, so which energy is most reaching out to us right now to help us open up our psychic abilities? Um, Peg's like, did she say your broom? <laughs> uh, hmm. <laughs> okay. Number two, how can we incorporate the energy of cannabis into our day-to-day? -day? Number three, numero tres, 
Um, well, uh, how does my pituitary gland factor into my ascension? Number four, how can Mary Jane assist us with ascension? Number five, oh, that's right. We had our friend Ruby, Ruby Slippers who was also helping us. Number five, uh, what message is Mama Gaia trying to tell us uh, with uh, when we connect to our herbal allies? Number six, in what way can cannabis assist us in unblocking various chakras? And number seven, last one, how can I embody the wisdom of this plant friend? Wonderful questions, wonderful questions. Okay, I have a lot of different decks here. I'm not going to use them all, but I just picked the ones that I felt were, I don't know, connected to the energy of today. <laughs> so I have the Herb Crafters Tarot. I have the Pot Tarot, which I'll probably keep that one out. I also have the Jupiter Power Tarot and it's beautiful green color, but also it's psychedelic use of plants. Um, I have doo -doo -doo, the Tanim Oracle all the way from my other sister, my out in uh, the Philippines. Uh, I have the Animal Allies Oracle, Universal Folk Oracle, and James's deck, his very special deck, which I promise to be very nice with it, Omega Land. <laughs> okay, and actually, before we dive into our reading, to give you guys time to go grab your decks, and by the way, let us know what you're working with. Uh, Angela says, I've got my big green Gaia statue with all the plants and animals all over her and the earth for her belly to draw down the messages. All right. So um, I want to say a special shout out to everybody who's in the chat today. Thank you to everybody who joins our chats. I love you guys so much. Thank you to all of my subscribers. We are almost at 10,000 sub subscribers. I've already put aside some things that I want to do for a giveaway for you guys and a giveaway for Patreon and a giveaway for my YouTube members. So technically three different types of giveaways. Um, so thank you guys so very much. Um, pretty excited about that. And uh, yeah, thank you to everybody who's, you know, watched our videos and commented and given thumbs ups and all of that. So my YouTube members, Liesl and Kayla, Susie, love you guys. <laughs> And also to my patrons, so Myrna and Kay, uh, Karen, Liesl, Heather, Lily, Dana, uh, Kayla, Syrian, Brandy, Jason, and Brian. <laughs> Love you guys so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you guys help to make all of this possible um, so that we can all have fun, get great messages, come for some healing. Come on, come on. Um, let's see. John says, I'm just going in for this one. I love it. I love when you guys just pull them down. KDS says, I have one deck that I do not even know how to use, but hey, it's called Spirit Song and it's all animals. I will pick to participate even though I don't know what the heck I'm doing. You know what? You just go with the intuition. I'm an intuitive reader. I mean, I've read all these like tarot books and oracle books, but when it came down to it, I just went with my gut. Like, what is my gut telling me just by looking at the image and using that as like my permission slip to access my intuition um, and help gain clarity sometimes. Hey, our buddy Russ is here. White rabbit. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late for a very important date. <laughs> no time to say hello. Goodbye. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. <laughs> oh, Peg says, glad you made it. Red says, hello, Peg, and the Mod Squad. Angela says, I read intuitively, just going with it feels right. Mystic Sisters Oracle would be another good deck for this. I'll grab it. All right. So using our pot tarot. And I hate that I have to get so creative in the ways that I talk about Miss Mary Jane because of the filters of YouTube. <laughs> so, uh trying not to get this video demonetized, this live chat, uh, I will continue to get creative in my, my speakings, my alluding to. <laughs> okay, so um, 
I'm going to ask the questions as it pertains to me. And I would ask that you guys do the same. So um, we, we could pull the, the cards for like, as it pertains to all of us, but I think it would be interesting to see like individually, like our answers for each of these individual questions and then you know kind of compiling them together you know I do believe that helps a lot of people too especially people who watch the replay when they can see like how um, certain people are connecting to this particular energy may also aid them in their own journey and you know connecting to energies and plant allies and things like that so okay so first question which energy is most reaching out to I would say me help me uh, open my psychic ability at this time. So which energy is most trying to reach out to me to help me open my psychic ability at this time? So same for you guys as well. Um, Lisa's saying hello to Russ. Angela says it's hiding. It says not today, I guess. <laughs> okay. Okay. Which energy is most reaching out to me to help me with my psychic ability at this time? Great question. Ah, we got the two of bongs. You know, I was, I was torn. I didn't know if I was going to use my little pipe today or I was going to use my very special ceremonial bong because I have one that's got crystals all over it and I only use it for altar work and like special meditations and things like that. But it takes up a lot of space and I don't got a lot of space up here. So little pipe it was. Anyway, back to the two of bongs. <laughs> Okay, um, which energy reaching out to me to help me open up my psychic ability at this time? Uh, okay, so actually the readings I've been doing for myself the past couple of days, it really feels like a connection to that water energy, like seriously, and not just because this is technically the two of cups, um, but I was being taken back to during one of my meditations, um, actually to my birth. So FYI, uh, reliving your birth is interesting. <laughs> um, like just the way things feel and coming into a 3D world, um, but also coming from like the world of weightlessness and kind of like how we view water in the 3D, but it was more of a 4D experience. Um, and then all the times that I felt, again, extremely connected to water when I was a toddler, um, even when I was a little kid and going to the bay and going to the beach and the pool and, you know, wanting to learn how to swim and, you know, all these things and eventually programming set in, you know, probably about like around three, four years of age where, you know, the parents are saying what is and is not possible with water and water is only for these times, only for summertime, only for play. Um, and all of the ways in which my soul was originally using water and just more connecting to, with my own energy, which is very watery type energy. Um, it was like that that was shut down, that connection severed. And it was just interesting to see like at what point like programming comes into play. At what point does my ego start solidifying my time here on earth? You know, that I am human and basically my experience is the I am instead of the soul being the I am. So I thought that was interesting. So I feel that uh, it's the energy of water and re incorporating it into my life, even though, yes, I don't technically live by an ocean any anymore, but I live on an ancient ocean, hence all the seashells and all of the um, like sea creatures that are still embedded in the rocks that are on our hill. It's actually it's pretty freaking magical. So it's still the ocean energy here, even if the water isn't here. Um, and as we've done with channelings before that water energy is so much more than the physical water that we see here on this planet. It's an energy itself, just like air is an energy, earth is an energy, it doesn't need to be something physical. So I feel like for me, in opening up a, an, another form of my own ability, or basically reconnecting to my spirit is through this watery type energy. So all right, all right, I dig it, I dig it. Um, okay, let's see, let's go back here. 
uh, Angela says, but I recommend it for you guys. The art is very beautiful and has many psychedelic fun colors. Russ says, hello, Liesl. I was on your site. Uh, what's cool is when I can put my energy back into music. I'll write songs with acoustic instruments and synth keyboards, no electric bass guitars or drum kits. And Angela says, Russ, blessings. Katie says, feathers and frog. Ooh, feathers and frog. For me, feathers is connection to spirit and frogs would be like abundance. But I'm curious to see what you guys get. Um, Peg says, homemade cards, the hanged man in reverse, which is true for me. Now hoping it's the collective answers matches so I don't have uh, to bear it on my own. Being stuck, knowing you're stuck, no movement. And Angela says, Mama Gaia statue says, you're already, you already know deep down you had a name for them when you were young, when your eyes were wide, when our world seemed less far away, when fairies didn't hide. Oksana is here. Hello, hello. John says, uh, yeah, I keep getting pulled inward. It's been too easy for me to let the outside have my attention. All right. Yeah, um, I mean, I felt lately that, I don't know, I feel less and less like I'm here <laughs> in 3D. Like more and more, I'm just like in the spirit realm, just like healing and cord cutting and reprogramming and just like, just again and again, every single day, like literally, I don't know how many times we're meditating every single day. It's like, <laughs> um, I'm like not even on earth anymore. Angela says, search within yourself and forget the barrier and remember there is nothing in your way between you and between us. Uh, barriers are an illusion. Break the illusion and walk in your true self. It knows the way. Amen. Amen. All right. Wonderful, wonderful messages, you guys. And don't feel like you guys have to keep up with um, the speed at which we're pulling cards. You know, if you still want to uh, continue polling for some old questions. That's great too. Um, okay, but we're going on to question number two. Um, hey, Wade is here. Wade Woodruff says, hello, family. Connected consciousness with purpose. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, number two, how can we incorporate the energy of cannabis in our day to day? So just the energy of cannabis, if you would like to use it in its physicality, that's up to you. Uh, maybe you want to do both its energy and its physicality, but how can we incorporate its energy into our day to day? Okay. And here we have the 10 of buds. And that would be like the 10 of pentacles. Uh, Wade says the eclipse energy, DNA upgrades, uh, kind of wondering with you guys or what you guys have to say about that. Uh, for me, I felt like there was a lot going on around that time. I kind of felt as I tapped into the matrix itself that um, the matrix uses its eclipse time and it kind of programs its like the way the world works to have eclipses. So it could be like the uh, down for repair sign. So anytime it wants to repair the matrix or it wants to upgrade the ego, because obviously also the soul is doing its own upgrades. So it's basically the light and shadow aspect. I think of Eclipse where uh, the light is not only doing upgrades for the soul, but the uh, matrix program also doing upgrades for the ego um, as they basically <laughs> fight for dominance within our little human vessel. But um, yeah, I felt like the energy was pretty intense during that time. <laughs> pretty intense and just as i felt the eclipse the air felt very tickly it was a nice feeling katia says elephant strength courage and endurance all right so 10 of pentacles here how can i incorporate the energy of cannabis into my day-to-day -day? actually <laughs> actually even though cannabis i would say puts me up in the ethers it also reminds us to stay grounded because it does come from the earth it does come from Gaia it's you know has roots it does feel into the soil um, it does feel all of the elements it does rely on all of the elements and it relies on all the things around them so 
I do feel like not only tapping into it for its expansion abilities, but also to remind myself to stay grounded while accessing those expansive, you know, um, abilities so that I could bring down into earth what it is that I'm experiencing. Otherwise, I think it would be really difficult to communicate to anybody else what it is I'm seeing or feeling or, you know, any messages that are coming through. So I want to be able to have a good balance um, connection between my grounded self so I can communicate with the outside world, <laughs> uh, but also my spirit self and just kind of like bridging the gap between the two. All right. Excellent. Wonderful answers. And uh, you're very welcome, Wade. Angela got from her mama Gaia statue, energy is energy. It goes everywhere, whether it's rooted inside a plant or floating in the air. Everything has a current, tap in, and if it doesn't feel right, it's okay. We all, hold on, let me get some wobble here, uh, are at home in different energetic rivers. If cannabis energy is one of yours, don't be ashamed, it's okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, these are great questions, you guys. Okay, number three. How does my pituitary gland factor into my ascension? Um, so we were talking about uh, the different chakras before, and um, we were ta talking about pineal gland, but we were also talking about pituitary glands. Um, so specifically with the pituitary gland, how does my pituitary gland factor into my ascension? So Actually, I'm curious to know. <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. All right. Ace of Boots. All right. So this is like your Ace of Pentacles. Okay. So let's see. Let's go into this. Mmm. Okay. Okay. So my pituitary glands, um, not talking about the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, um, which, you know, pituitary regulates hormones and, and things like that. And sometimes when people have like um, a sluggish pituitary gland, it could affect, you know, how the body operates and works and sometimes is responsible for our weight gain or weight loss and, you know, all, all of these things that keep us in balance. And so when I'm tapping into the pituitary gland or saying that we could tap into our pituitary gland, since it seems to not get as much attention in the spiritual community as the pineal gland, at least from my perspective, um, that it's really great to help us to witness the human self um, objectively, if, if I'm making sense with that. It's when I, it almost as if I see myself from a, a third person, you know, when I look at myself in the mirror, it's almost as if I'm looking at somebody else. And when I tap into the pituitary, I could do something like that, where I'm just witnessing this woman and uh, I see her for all, all of it, you know, her strengths, her weaknesses, um, her shadow, her light, um, how she may help or hinder herself or others, um, her upbringing, her programming, everything that has to do with this particular timeline, this particular 3D life, and just observe without any sort of, you know, connection or the woulds or the shoulds or the, you know, I, I wish I was a little more like this or that, but more a total disconnection. Um, not the disconnection in that I've decided somehow to like shut down and decide that I'm no longer connected to my human vessel, but more in a witnessing aspect so that I could objectively help where I need to help in my own healing journey um, so that I could, without judgment, look at my weaknesses, look at my strengths, see what I could work on more, see what I could even enhance even more, um, see how I affect others, see how I speak to myself. And I think that would be really good for healing, actually. Um, and understanding the difference between, you know, ego and higher self, and just again, getting more and more and more clarity as I go deeper. So I think for me, personally, uh, tapping into that pituitary gland would help me to do that. 
um, so that I don't get so, I guess, uh, boots on the ground, tunnel vision when it comes to particular aspects of my healing. Let's say that there's something that my ego absolutely keeps putting up its walls and it's like, mm, this is a little too difficult at this time. Um, and instead of seeing it like that, which means that I would have a sort of feeling <laughs> about what it is that I'm witnessing, um, but instead take an even further step back and say, oh, okay, I see what my ego is doing there. The ego is doing this, which causes a reaction in this and, you know, or chain reaction here. But I can see where it's coming from. So the ego can also show me, you know, da, 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 where it's stemming from so that I can go to the root cause and then, you know, see how that affects the ego, which then thus affects how the human, me, uh, operates. So very interesting. I wasn't expecting that answer. Of course, the ego never expects <laughs> much. Let's see here. Um, doo, doo, doo. Russ says, Angela, so cool with your mama statue readings. I've found tarot readings that match yours. Peg got the nine of swords, growth and satiety. Katie has got two lovebirds, union, harmony. Angela said, mama guy statue, your body is connected to your soul. So is your mind. One affects the other. So make sure the words and energy you feed it are kind. The glands are places that are easy places for the body to show energy, to pay attention. Uh, to its messages, there will be a bit difference between the paths are different for each of you. Amen. And Peg said, how bizarre. It goes dormant. We need to wake up. Yeah. And Angela said, oh, wow, Russ, that's awesome. So cool. She's talking to you. To, uh, the statue readings are something I started doing for myself this last year when I wasn't able to pull a deck. And Katia says, if you know the self, you relate with others better. Exactly, exactly. Angela says, it's very fun. I recommend trying it. And Peg says, I asked, how can we activate it? Judgment reverse, uh, lack of self-awareness, doubt, and self-loathing. So tackle those and voila. <laughs> nice. Angela says, all you do is take a doll or statue, touch it, and feel the energy and what the vibes say. I have a various uh, deity statues and dolls I do this with. Very cool. Very cool. All right. And for those of you who are new, uh, Angela is our uh, live chat poet. I love her, her poem messages. So <laughs> I love that she gets those messages also through her st statue and the various deity statues and dolls she says she has. So very cool. All right. Um, question number four. How can Mary Jane assist us with ascension? Okay, so how can Mary Jane assist us with ascension? And I'll see if later on when I'm on the computer, if I can try to turn this spread into like a little digital spread and I'll post it on Instagram at Kittens, Weights, and Tarot uh, so that you guys can work on the spread again later. Okay, so how can Mary Jane assist us with ascension? Ooh, and we have the Wheel of Fortune. And Angela says, why did cannabis get the name Mary Jane? Does anyone know? Well, because maybe Marijuana, <laughs> like Maria Juana, Maria is Mary, and then Juana Juana is, is like John, Jane, you know. So <laughs> uh, so I, I feel like it's it's just the like English translation of like in Spanish, like Maria Juana, you know. Um Peg says, probably because they were high and couldn't pronounce it. <laughs> There's that too. Russ says, uh, Angela, I found my intuition comes in clear when I'm daydreaming. If I seek an intuitive answer, I don't trust it. Room for, room for improvement here. No uh, foil or statue in my van living environment. Well, maybe the trees. Getting uh, messages from the trees. Doll or no doll or statue. Got it. And then Peg said, um, Indiga Vida in the Garden of Eden. Ah. <laughs> okay, so actually this Wheel of Fortune card looks like, um, like a wood shelf, a very intricate wood shelf that James's sister had built for him back in the day. It's actually in his, his old bedroom. 
Arrested a tree. Good idea. Yes. <laughs> okay, so how can Mary Jane assist us or assist me with ascension? Mm. For me personally, whether I have ingested it or I am ingesting it via, uh, via smoking, um, I tend to have a clearer, I guess, perspective at how things are coming full circle. <laughs> and that's actually what I'm, I'm getting with our Wheel of Fortune here. So I can see just more clearly why certain things occur in my life, kind of what direction they're headed, how things have like come around, gone around uh, and reconnected, kind of like the Ouroboros. And in that, I see more of the mm, interconnectedness and the, I don't know, almost like a chessboard, how things just kind of seem to add up, how they're not random. They're synchronicities, I guess you could say. And in seeing that, in witnessing that, it does aid me in my understanding of my human self as well as my soul self for ascension, for expansion in that. So at least that's that's for me. That's that's what I'm getting. Because that just helps me become more aware of that. Could I do this on my own? Of course. I do feel like our, our plant allies are there to assist us, to show us how we can do it ourselves. Um, you know, but sometimes maybe it's just the human side of me that would like the physical form of it too. Um, okay, so let's go into doo -doo -doo, question numero cinco, number five. What message is Mother Gaia trying to tell us uh, when we connect to our herbal allies? So what message is Mother Gaia trying to tell us or offer us when we connect to our herbal allies? Great question. And I believe that was from Angela. Uh, let's go back here. Angela, so daydreaming is just how it feels when I connect with the doll reading. So you're already there. No, no item required. Wow. Texas, it was a song back in the day. They were so <laughs> drunk and high, they slurred it. Katia says the hangman, justice, ace of shells, turtles, ten of feathers, transformation like shedding snakeskin. Wow. Very cool. Peg said, can't think of a band that they were famous for it, though. <laughs> and just said, Mama Gaia statue, judge your reaction to it to know how and if it feels helping you, how it makes you feel and the emotion it brings up in you. Some will be calm, some will jitter, and some will react in other ways. Different responses are different messages. If you are uncomfortable with it, what you feel, remember, different paths will lead to the same place in other ways. Amen. And Katie says, we have options when we connect. Peg said, Iron Maiden. Yes. <laughs> and then Russ said, Iron Butterfly. All right. Coming up with the, the band, me, band name. Okay. Um, let's look at, okay, so we're pulling a card for that question number five. All right. What message is Mother Gaia trying to tell us? When we connect to our herbal allies, what is she trying to tell me? We have the seven of joints, which is like the seven of wands. <laughs> I love that, by the way. I love the little jacket in the pocket. Probably best to put those little guys in a container so they don't get scrunched. <laughs> More like, oh shoot, the container is gone. Oh well. Okay, so let's, uh, let's dive into this one. Okay, so <laughs> for me, Mama Guy was saying that I've gotten pretty good at seeing the difference of when I become too reliant on like my herbal allies. I uh, uh, either I'm, I'm smoking them, eating them, using them in teas, like whatever the, the herbal ally may be. It doesn't necessarily have to be Miss Mary Jane. Um, but sometimes when I get too, too stuck in what I was brought up understanding was that outside um, medicines 
are the way to treat an energetic ailment, so to speak. Um, and so Mama Gaia just reminding me that the allies are there to show me the way. They're there to help remind me of the power that I already have and the healing energy that I could already uh, direct towards myself and that I don't necessarily need the plant itself, but that I could connect to its wisdom and its energy and understanding that the plant is me. So therefore, I can connect to that own wisdom and understanding within myself to find the knowledge that the plant has and find that within myself so that I could heal myself. So Mama Gaia just reminding me that not to get stuck in too much of the, you know, outside things, the outside stuff when it comes to healing. It's like you can, you know, use that. I mean, obviously free will, I, I do what I want, but, um, but just to have more balance and sense growth and expansion and ascension is what I ultimately want. It's like, well, if you ultimately want that, then you have to remember that you are a sovereign being and the power comes from within, not from the outside. So I dig that. I'll dig it, man. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. Angela says, Mama Gaia statue. Some say nature's quiet. Well, our funny, um, Oh, quite well, are funny. Even plants will talk to you. I'm honestly rarely ever silent, always trying to whisper in your ear. I want to connect, to talk, to play. It's simple. I love you all, my dears. Amen. Russ says, in Agata da Vida. <laughs> and John says, they show the path, but can't walk it for you. Nice. Yes, yes. That's exactly well put. All right. Uh, question number six. In what way can cannabis assist us in unblocking various chakras? So let's say I have a blockage in my throat chakra or my heart chakra, maybe in my crown, my third eye. Maybe it's my root or my sacral or my solar plexus or any of the other various chakras that we have in our body other than the seven main ones that people look at. Um, but how can we utilize cannabis's energy or the physicality of cannabis? to assist us in unblocking these various chakras. <laughs> I love this high priestess card. Of course, of course. And I love that she has the yin yang symbol, the symbol of Tai Chi <laughs> on her finger. All right, so let's dive into this one. Mm. Because for me personally, I feel like my ego has less effect on what's what's going on <laughs> with me when when I'm smoking or ingesting cannabis um, and I'm more in my soul self or my higher self. Therefore, it's easier for me when when I'm doing healing while I'm, you know, high um, to look inwards and find my blockages and find within myself where the blockages are actually stemming from. Like, let's say there's a blockage in my heart chakra. It's just easier for me to, without ego, witness what or why the heart is choosing to have a blockage. What is it protecting me from? Where's that blockage stemming from so that I can understand it so that I could heal it? Um, and then, you know, we go from there. So not necessarily relying on the plant to do the healing for me, as John said, or unblocking the heart for me. I'm still doing all the work. It's just showing me the way. Um, it's saying, hey, you don't have too much ego right now. So while you don't have too much ego blocking yourself from healing yourself, here you go. <laughs> like, you're an open book right now. Have at it. So I'm like, okay, let's do some healing. Let's look at my crown chakra. Any blockages there? No. Okay. Let's, you know, and then just go down, down the list. Um, any blockages anywhere in the body. So I dig that. I totally dig that. All right. Um, Katie says, nine of crystals, security and abundance. The spider web. Walking in a spider web. Da -da -da -da, and I call you back. It's on your phone. It's Why has no doubt been coming up so much lately? I don't know. <laughs> 
Angela said, uh, Mama Gaia statue, people blurt out things in altered states that they may not say any other way. It can help you get in the habit of choosing to release blockages on your own. Katia says, I clearly need to study tarot. Hey, you know, it's just for me, I think, I mean, it's fun to read up on tarot and understand like the meanings of the cards and different systems. But ultimately, I personally have felt that being an intuitive reader has helped me so much more than understanding the book meaning of something. I know that there are other readers that have, you know, just vast understanding of like uh, symbology and, you know, metaphysics and, um, you know, background of like the Marseille systems and the Rider Waite Smith and the uh, Tarokis and, and all of that. And it's wonderful. And I think it's fascinating to read into and definitely like worth a read. But like when it comes to me, like really getting down and getting messages it all just kind of comes down from the higher self. And it's interesting that the higher self tends to go along with what some of those like book definitions are, which is like kind of cool. So, <laughs> um, let's go back here. And just as rather than letting them ruin your day, the energy alone is enough and it can help clear the path for you. It's a breaker of bad energy habits. It's true. Amen. And she said, tarot gave me little gray hairs. I couldn't grasp it until I decided to just read intuitively. Katie says, I appreciate everyone's tolerance of my beginner state. You know, no worries. We're, we're all like in different stages of connecting to our intuition here. Like none of us, I say, none of us would say that we are masters of anything. <laughs> you know, we're all students and teachers, but um, we're all learning from one another. So I would never say that anybody is more advanced than anybody else we're just at different stages um, of understanding our own intuitive abilities and how we access those intuitive abilities so you're not getting any judgment from me over here all right last question how can i embody the wisdom of this plant friend and if i am correct this came from our friend john um and just KDS, you're doing great. You've got this. I believe in you. And John says, I'm a perpetual beginner. <laughs> yep, yep. I I feel that in many ways where I'm I'm just like, sure. Yeah, I mean, I I do readings for people and I feel comfortable in my intuitive abilities, but do I feel like I've mastered my soul? No, because then that would mean that I have no ego. And I know that I still have egos, therefore I'm not like really mastered in in anything yet. I feel like I'm comfortable in it. I'm good, but I can always be better. I can always get better. I can always expand. And the moment that I ever feel like learning, I don't need to learn anymore. That's when I know that's a hundred percent ego. And that's not true. Okay. Last question. How can I embody the wisdom of this plant friend? Aha, uh -huh, we got the four of joints, which is the four of wands. Okay. How can I embrace or so how can I embody the wisdom of this plant friend? Okay, so it's reminding me of like my mood when I have a little bit of cannabis in my system. That normally it's like things that would normally frustrate my, my ego. Like, I don't know, let's say something on the homestead broke. I would be like, oh my gosh, this broke. We got to fix it. And maybe we fix it right now. Oh man, that means I got to go all the way into town, which is an hour away. And we got to go to Home Depot. We got to, you know, blah, 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 blah. All the things that my ego loves to fret and worry and anxiety. And if I've been smoking, I just don't care. <laughs> I just witness it. Like I understand, sure, yeah, we have to fix it. It's not that I'm not going to fix it. It's just that, like, what can I do about it right now? I can't do anything about it. So what's the point of having it ruin my day? It's like I witness it. I see that it needs to get fixed all in due time. I mean, you know, if I'm going to live to be over 100 years old, why do I need it fixed, like, five minutes from now? Like, just <laughs> take a chill pill. <laughs> so that's how cannabis speaks to me is because sometimes, I don't know if you guys get this, sometimes I can be a little anal retentive. I it could be when I'm very much in my ego, very perfectionist, very like everything in its place. 
but when I've been smoking, I just like, you know, I'm very laissez faire. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, in due time, all in good time. I'll get to it when I get to it. It's like, it's, it's not a, a big deal at the moment. The only thing that is a big deal for me in those moments is healing, is like witnessing the world, trying to understand my world, seeing things from a different perspective. To me, that is way more important than if the dishes need to get done or if I need to go readjust a solar panel or, you know, something like that. It's so I, I could see that. All right. Thank you, Miss Mary Jane. <laughs> okay. Let's go back here. <laughs> and just said, Mama Guy statue for KDS. Don't overthink the cards, my dear. Art speaks in different ways to different eyes and ears. Ground yourself down. Take a break uh, or a breath and know if you don't get it, get it or get it right away. Uh, that it just means you need to relax and practice more. You don't need to be perfect. Just do your best, dear. It's okay. Amen. Uh, Peg's like giggles. Remember the giggles. Oh yeah, there's that too. I usually can't stop laughing, but usually laughing gets out of control. If there's shrooms in it. But anyway, <laughs> Katie says, peace, compassion, sea otter. Otters are so darn cute. Kayla's here. Hey girl. And just says, mama guy statue, relax and let the stress go away. Release what you've been holding onto. Don't strive for a state of perfection. Perfect is an illusion. Flaws are the beauty of you. Chris says, I'm new at tarot. I hold the deck on my hand while imagining the pure white light of love beaming onto the deck. I shuffle the deck three times and pull one card, then research for meaning. All right. Love it. Thank you guys for sharing all of your messages, all of your ways of accessing your intuition, being very supportive of one another. I really, truly appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you to everybody who helped to create our little cannabis spread. Um, I will make sure that I make something nice out of it, you know, where we have an actual like picture and the questions. So like a little online spread that you guys can access. I'll make sure to post it to Instagram at Kittens, Weights, and Tarot, and I'll post it to my website. So on my blog page is where I keep all of my tarot spreads on my website. So if ever you want to go on my website, not just to like grab readings from me, but if you want to get like some free stuff, I do have um, free articles for you guys to read. Um, I've had various like writers uh, have, you know, offer to have my article or their articles on my website. So I have different articles there, different um, like ways of working with the body or working with the soul. Plus there's tarot spreads. So definitely check it out. Um, Ruby Slipper says, thank you everyone. I love these cards, Tara. Uh, this live you made my day. So glad. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and remember, we still got an herbal smoke to make. So I'm thinking this. Okay. Let's create this herbal smoke together. James left me a little bit of that flower <laughs> to add to my herbal smoke um, to maybe make the end of the live chat even more funsies, maybe for you guys, I don't know. <laughs> um, and afterwards, we'll do our super chats and super stickers. Um, and then we'll do our, our guided meditation. What do you guys think about that? So I'll put this deck off to the side. I'm going to lower the camera so that you guys can see exactly what I'm doing here. Um, and maybe I'll, I'll talk about the herbs. Let's talk about the herbs first, and then we'll get to doing our witchy business here. Okay. So I'm gonna put this off to the side. Thank you, tarot spread and my pen. Got my lighter have my my trusty little pipe I just love those colors yellow and blue I don't know I mean you guys can see the yellow of my fingers like yellow and blue I love those colors um okay so oh by the way I have certain crystals charging up my herbs right now I just feel like crystals and herbs are like a no-brainer they just kind of go together they like work so well together just the way that humans work well with crystals and they work well with herbs like herbs and crystals, I think are besties. Like, <laughs> so I have some of uh, a few of James's wire wraps that he completed yesterday. One of them was actually attached to his hat, but 
Um, he will be putting these in his shop, but I think he's going to put these on his Instagram first. So at Light of Raga on Instagram, but he created these beautiful wire wraps. And these, I believe, are the Lemurians. Um, this one, is this the, no, the, the other one is the double terminated Lemurian. But yeah, we have this wonderful Lemurian here. This one was my favorite. So anybody who gets this one. <laughs> um, and these are from Brazil. This one's got like little clinger honors right here. And when they are in the sunshine, there are so many rainbows. So I was meditating with this one yesterday because it said that it was great at helping for ego removal, which I'm all about. So I went down and we, we meditated with this one. This one was for um, helping to... When I tapped into its energy, it was for bringing things into full circle. So like completion, but also release. Um, so which is also really good for healing. So there's that. And then the last one that he wire wrapped, which is this one right here, I got that was really good for heart. So anybody who's working through heart issues or issues of the heart, uh, this was a good crystal for that. So I just wanted to point those out because they are charging my herbs at the moment. So, and James made them. I really like James's wire wrap. So <laughs> maybe I'm biased, but you know. Uh, okay, let's see here. Angela says, ooh, sounds lovely. We'll all tap the good vibe, leaf vibes. Katie says, I'm still terrified from fifth grade assembly when Nancy Reagan's campaign was just say no. Dude. <laughs> well, don't get me started on those campaigns <laughs> uh, and their actual mission. Even though the mission looked like it had great intentions, you know, the war on drugs, as they say, but um, it was just to put more drugs on the streets by the very people who were trying to get them off the streets. Anywho, that's a discussion for another day. And just as herbs and crystals, feathers are a magical trio. I'm afraid to try it myself because I'm already daydreaming very vividly without it. Kitty says, I thought it, I was on drugs because I took cherry laden cough drop without really having a cough. Oh my God. <laughs> no. <laughs> Angela says, so I don't want to try the item. I've been playing with DMT music and trying to figure out the frequency. I feel better working with the plant's energy. And that's, that's wonderful. You know, I love working with its energy too. And I feel like for most of my life, all I did was work with its energy. I didn't work with it like physically at all. Not until probably like a couple of years ago, actually. Angela says his wire wrap is so beautiful. I will let him know. Katie says, I know the government shenanigans. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, well, for me, I will say, okay, quick little FYI on my little journey. I'd always, always, you know, I was always curious about cannabis. I was always curious about DMT and shrooms and just all of these things um, because I was going through a, a spiritual awakening like way back when. And I wanted to understand all the different ways that the people that I considered spiritual, like how do you access that spirituality? Because I, I, didn't, I didn't understand how to do that myself yet. Um, and Wade says high positive frequency vibration energy with headphones. Ooh, nice. Very nice. Um, and so I would, I would read up on these things, but of course, you know, um, back when I was in college, I was an NC2A athlete. So there was drug testing all the time. So I didn't do, I didn't do any drugs or anything in college. <laughs> I missed out on those years. You know, um, I didn't even drink alcohol. You know, I was like so terrified that my coach was going to find out. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I was a little Miss Goody Two Shoes, but all of my friends were stoners. They've always been stoners. Like my friends love to party <laughs> and I hung out with people who love to party. I went to raves and I'm pretty sure I was the only one not on Molly or ecstasy. <laughs> And I'm the only one like sober, still dancing till 6 a.m. Because I always felt that I was naturally high. I'm always naturally just like tapped in. I'm like, I I feel like 
because I can tap into people's energy so well before I knew I could tap into energy, I could tap into somebody who was stoned and feel stoned myself. I could tap into somebody who was drunk and feel drunk myself. So I didn't really ever feel that I needed to physically take those substances until I got older. And then, yes, you know, of course I wanted wine. I wanted a beer or something like that. And it's fine. It just never really became like, I guess, part of my repertoire. Are. Like I never like felt called to always have alcohol or, you know, anything like that. Um, and then when, uh, as of like a couple of years ago, a few years ago, I decided, you know what, I'm, I want to finally, you know, I mean, sheesh, you know, I'm like in my forties now I want to finally, <laughs> I guess this was when I was 40. I had just turned 40. Actually, no, this was on my 40th birthday. This is why I tried it. I was like, I want to try marijuana. And so I tried it and nothing happened. And I think I tried for a whole entire year with nothing happening. I even called my dad and my dad was like, he says, you know what, maybe it's our Pinoy genes because we're Filipino, but like, he says, it just never worked on me either. So I would like pretend to be high with my friends. He says, but you know, growing up back in the forties and the fifties, all we had was like seeds and sticks anyway. <laughs> so he's like, we didn't really like nothing. He says nothing really happened, but my dad now does gummies and he says that helps him. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So, um, so then I, one day, uh, James got me something called a birthday cake, like chocolate bar. And I was like, ooh, birthday cake, because it was my birthday. So I ate 10 milligrams. Nothing happened. We waited an hour. Ate another 10 milligrams. Nothing happened. And I was like, you know what? So I had 50 milligrams, and I'm waiting. And I'm like, you know what? I don't think this marijuana stuff works on me. Maybe it's just because I'm too naturally high, you know? And then all of a sudden, it was like, what is happening? <laughs> like, what is happening? <laughs> Um, and I will tell you, I've gotten high since then. So yeah, that was, that was my first experience. And it was so intense that my, I was having an out of body experience while being awake. So it's like I was walking and I felt like my consciousness jump out of my body. And I was literally looking at James and I going for a walk and I was like freaking out. I was like, Oh my God, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it, it was like finally seeing what I normally had seen in my meditations and my astral projections, but seeing it in 3D. And I was like so freaked out. And James was just like, you need to like chill the F out. Like what is wrong with you? <laughs> and so, yeah. So since then, um, you know, I, I don't say we use it a lot. But, you know, uh, we have friends that basically, I mean, here on the mountain, that's kind of how people do gift giving around here is like stuff they can grow. And people like to grow cannabis out here as well as vegetables and fruits and things like that. So sometimes our neighbors are like, hey, here you go. <laughs> Here's a little exchange. So, uh, so yeah, I, I have been trying to work with it in a spiritual sense. Um, and I have felt that it instead of like fearing what I was feeling instead of like I, I went into it and I really decided to use it as an ally in that way just like I would do my teas because I make teas all the time different herbal teas for different reasons um, and like the reading was saying before earlier that we were doing I like to utilize their energy I like to have them show me how their energy could you know, be incorporated into me, how I can see that within myself, how I can help myself um, find the plant within me to help me on my journey. So um, with that being said, let's go ahead and create that herbal smoke. And I will show you why I'm using these particular herbs. I only use the herbs that are what my intuition and through my study of herbs are okay in a smoking blend. I know that there are some that are not so great for the lungs. Some people say all smoking is no great for the lungs. Hey, more power to you. This is just my beliefs. This is just what I do. <laughs> so, um, okay. Uh, let's see. Let's go back here. And just as I've heard of some people offering their deities good vibe leaf smoke or adding the plant to their incense. Yes, like a Santa Muerte. She, per she prefers like a little joint here and there. All right, Wade has, for the headphones, got the 936 hertz, which is beautiful. 
Russ says, pure white light for cleansing and light green healing, uh, light for healing. Katia says, okay, that is useful, Russ. Wade says, you astral projected travel too high. Yeah, <laughs> I went a little above and beyond. And that, that's where I try not to be. I don't want to be like so high. I can't bring down the messages and I don't remember what I did. I want to be just at that level where my ego says goodbye. And I'm like, okay, let's get down to some mega healing here. Angela says, 936 hertz is what I listened to to sleep last night, Wade. And Katie says, intent impacts for sure. Wade says, coffee time. Uh, have a blessed day. Same to you. Same to you. All right. Um, okay. So I think I have this backwards. So give me just a second here. I'm going to turn this, uh, this ditty around my tripod having a little bit of okay so we're putting this back on I just turned it around so when I point the camera down you guys can see what the heck I'm doing there we go okay all righty here we are you guys we are we are down on the table all right so First thing I want to show you guys is, <laughs> well, James has um, our magical leaf in here, so we'll, we'll leave that for last. I have my little mortar and pestle. There we go. Um, and then here are the herbs that I have. So calendula, as you can see here, is uh, also known as marigold but uh, it's connected to the solar plexus. I feel that it's very good for um, tapping in for like meditations, helps out, uh, you know, opening up clairvoyant abilities, helps to keep you calm. Um, definitely connected with psychic energy. So that I wanna add a little bit of that. So we're gonna put that into our mortar and pestle here. Like I said, I'm making a big batch just in case anybody would actually like to purchase this for my shop. So um, a little bit of calendula, of course, putting intention in the whole time. All right, so we have some calendula in there. Another high vibe and leaf is Damiana, and it's been used by our native friends for centuries. Um, so Damiana was not only help or used to like aid in respiratory illness, but also helping to like clear out blockages, both physical and non-physical. Um, so it's definitely seen as like the leaf of expansion. So I tend to add it to a lot of my things. Um, many of our native friends also used it during like vision quests. So definitely opening up that third eye and crown chakras. So here we go, adding some of that leaf here. A little bit of Damiana. Okay, actually a little bit more of Damiana because it can be potente and I like a little potente. <laughs> um, the other one I have here is Egyptian Blue Lotus. And so here's another flower. This is mostly going to be like a floral floral blend. Um, and Katius was wondering, oh, how I spell the herb Damiana. There we go. D-A-M-I-A-N-A. -A -A. So D-A-M-I-A-N-A. -A -A. Damiana. All right. And so this next one is our Egyptian blue lotus. And some of you may have seen those hieroglyphics and uh, paintings on the tombs of the ancient Egyptians, where they had much respect for the lotus flower. Um, and for this one, I feel that it does also help with, uh, like elevation, like the, the point of this whole, um, smoke blend is for expansion and awareness, um, expanding and witnessing the self, witnessing the ego, witnessing the higher self for deep healing so that we can, without judgment, go in and heal what needs to be healed. So that's, that's my, my intention with this, this herbal blend. Okay, so we have a little bit of our blue lotus in there. Also has a very calming effect. Uh, sometimes when you buy like herbal smokes online, they might have uh, Egyptian blue lotus because it's uh, good at um, 
like soothing the nerves. So like releasing anxiety and tension and things like that. All right, so mugwort, which is also known as a witch's flying herb. I guess if you took a ton of mugwort, <laughs> uh, you might be flying pretty high, but only momentarily. Um, it doesn't have a lasting effect like cannabis. So I'm just going to put a little bit in there. But it's used uh, for protection and purification rituals um, by many different cultures, actually. Um, but it was also seen as like the witch's flying herb because you do feel like a little woo, but it lasts probably like... I don't know, 30 seconds. <laughs> so, and then I also want to put in rose as that has the frequency of love. Um, but it's also good for healing. And so, you know, I want to make sure that things that are going into my lungs are not only going to help my lungs, but also going to help me heal in the energetic sense. All right, so we got a little flower in there. Excellent. Maybe a little bit more rose. Okay. So just my little rose flower here. All right. And then I want to add blue vervain, blue vervain. So this is also used for healing, um, but it's also um, used in sleep. So this is helping us to stay very calm. Um, and again, reducing anxiety. So those of us that may feel a little... Um, apprehension with like trying a smoking herb. This helps to just kind of calm us down a little bit so that we can just enjoy the experience, be open to the experience um, without throwing fear into the equation. Okay, and then I have here my butterfly pea leaf flower. And this one we actually have in Desert Cauldron Shop. It's just I've been like experimenting with it before I actually want to <laughs> like truly put it into our shop. But as a tea, this is freaking wonderful. This is very soothing. It turns your tea like a, a beautiful indigo, which I love. So we're going to put a few of those flowers. Oops, maybe a little too many. There we go. Just a few of them. And again, I want to do this for working with the third eye, but also keeping me calm and chillaxed. That's what we want. Okay, I have one last herb, and this one I add to all of my smoke blends, no matter what my intention is with the blend, and that is mullein. Some people call it mulin, mullein, mulein. Um, and this was also used by many of our native tribes in the local area to um, help with bronchitis and any sort of respiratory illness. And actually when James was having some uh, sinus issues due to like, I think the winds and stuff we had around here, he just got a lot of like juniper ash or not ash, but like dust uh, pollen, you know, in his lungs. And he just had um, a lot of mucus in his lungs. So he needed an expectorant. Uh, mulin is used as an expectorant in many like uh, ancient practices involving curing of the lungs, helping out the lungs. So this just creates like a really soothing barrier so that whatever it is that you're smoking uh, isn't going to be irritating to um, the bronchioles in any way. Okay, so put my mulin off to the side, put that here. Maybe I'll just move that there. Okie dokie. So we have our blend here. We are going to crush this up. Uh, I'm not really going to crush up the, uh, the special flower <laughs> into it yet. Um, I'm going to add that separate. Okay. So I just want to get a nice good grind into all of this. All right. And of course, like uh, you guys can see, I have my lighter here. Got my trusty little pipe. Get to those in a moment. All right. Making sure everything's nice and mm, smells so good. I bet if I drank this as a tea as well, this would be a pretty nice tea. It's like a healer, 
opener. Some might say like a road opener kind of thing. Um, just helping us to be more cozy with our soul self, our awareness and our expansion. Um, and I will put this in a nice little jar of the leftovers. I won't have much of it, but maybe for <laughs> one person, I might be able to put this in a tin for one person. I might be able to sell this to one person. <laughs> in fact, yeah, I think there's just enough for maybe one or two people if they were to buy it. Okay. This is not a huge batch. Okay, I'm just trying to break up some of the blue lotus now as some of the leaves are, or the petals are still kind of large. And I want this to be as small as possible. All right. All right, almost there, folks. Okay. I think that's good for now. There we go. There's our little, our good stuff. So we're going to pop open some of this. Mm, smells so good. This was a gift from our, um, <laughs> our neighbor. <laughs> um, he's pretty awesome. He's like my grandfather reincarnated. Anyway, so we're going to put a little bit of this smoke in here but I also want to put a little bit of Miss Mary Jane so we're gonna sprinkle that in a little bit okay want to pack it in too much maybe put well actually let's put a little bit more of this and then we'll put a little bit whoa holy shnikes too much too much sorry about that <laughs> we're not doing all that right now there we go <laughs> like whoa a little too much there in there do, do, do. okay <laughs> uh, so like I said I could drink my little herbal blend as a tea and I think that it would be a lovely tea and I think that it would be like good as like um, an herbal nightcap I'm not talking about the marijuana. I'm talking about the, the flowers that we blended here together. So, yeah, I think that that would be good to get you kind of in a drowsy state, you know, if nothing else was going on and you weren't going to do any sort of like meditation or anything. But as a smokable blend, I think um, be really good. Okay, so let's go back up here. <laughs> hey, guys. Um... I will give this a little a little smoke ski. I'll let you know how it goes, how it feels, and all of that. Um, because yeah, if anybody's going to end up purchasing that from us, probably want to know what's how it, how it feels, <laughs> how it tastes, and all of that. Okay, so let's go back here. I missed a ton of your comments. Um, Angela said, "Ooh, blue lotus is a beautiful flower." Uh, Peg is Jones and Angela says, I remember something about Blue Lotus being associated with uh, Sekhmet, goddess of healing, in, or uh, Selket, um, goddess of healing in Egypt, goddess of the scorpion, Aset, goddess of magic. Uh, Selket's name means um, she who allows the throat to breathe. She's associated with the scorpion, but with no claws or stinger because she's gentle healer and doesn't like to sting or pinch. 
interesting you mentioned Silkette because I was very attracted to that deity back when I was like six or seven years old. And I was like, my Nana had everything on ancient Egypt because like our last name basically does translate to Egypt. So we had this fascination with everything Egyptian. And Silkette was the first goddess I think I learned about. Peg's like, I want a portal over you, Tara. <laughs> Angela says, um, uh, on payday, I'm going to buy some Egyptian licorice tea. It's so soothing and calming. Rest said, Damiana's easy smoking properties and bright citrus flavor and aroma make it ideal base for floral herbal smoking blends. Um, so, okay, uh, Damiana tea and drink blends. Angela says, that stuff looks so nice. Elise is here. Hello. Says, yeah, I made it. Angela said, the good vibes leaf wants to be high vibes leaf. Yes. And KDS was wondering what everyone's go-to tea is. My go-to tea, Himalayan green tea. Like if we just want to go basic, that'd be my tea. Uh, Angela says, here's a funny good vibes leaf joke. What happens when two cows get loose in a field of good vibe leaves? No one was sure, but everyone guessed the stakes were very high. <laughs> nice. Kayla's liking the green tea. Uh, Peg says, one of them jumped over the moon. Uh, Katie said, green tea, does it keep awake? For me, nah. I think it has so very little caffeine in it that actually puts me to sleep. Angela says, I'm terrified of scorpions, but I'm very drawn to silkettes. Maybe she's popping in with the blue lotus. Russ says, have you tried THC? <laughs> you know what? I actually have. Didn't really have an effect. I think I would have to use a large quantity which mm, probably not going to use it in that way then. Uh, Elise likes the Indian chai. Kata says, I have a lot to learn all. And just as Egyptian lotus uh, licorice, when I get it, it's sweet, spicy hibiscus. Very good. Uh, but it does contain cayenne pepper. Uh, Peg says, nest tea. And Angela says, I have not tried it, but I want to try catnip tea. Catnip tea is actually very calming. And actually, if you were to smoke a large quantity of catnip, you wouldn't go crazy like cats go crazy for it. But it does have a very sedative effect. So if you were having trouble sleeping, actually smoking catnip or having catnip tea would be very good. Okay, so here we are. We're going in, you guys. Let's see how it goes. Let's see. Oops. Why is my battery not charging? There we go. Um, hmm. This has very, I would say, hold on, let me get one more here. Get a little taste. It's got a citrusy mm, floral vibe. So I'd see if you were to smoke spring, this tastes like spring. It's like a lemon and orange citrus, but like this, like that's the spice of it. Floral. And there's something else in there. What do I want to say that tastes like? <laughs> I don't know. The, you could say you're, it tastes like you're smoking sandwiches, but it does kind of taste like a like a fresh sandwich or something on a like a hot summer day. So I would say that this is very cooling because I do feel like a cooling sensation on my body. So it's cooling. I feel gentle, calming. Um, the citrus isn't too much of like a wake up citrus, um, but more of a, like enjoying the day, relaxing. So I'd say this is a very relaxing spring type blend. Um, I would say probably more appropriate for Beltane, which is coming up on May 1st. So I'm going to keep probably some of this blend for myself, maybe to use on Beltane and then the, the rest I'll, I'll sell it. I guess <laughs> on my website or you know maybe I'll just do it on Instagram first um, because I don't want to have to go through PayPal and all that stuff on my website but 
Okay, let's have a little bit more. Okay, that was marijuana. That was in there right now. Interesting. I can definitely taste the Damiana. And I feel the mugwort. The mugwort like instantly makes you like a little a little loopy in the head. <laughs> uh, but it's only there for about 30 seconds, so it's no worries. And that one kind of has a berry. There's like berries in there some, almost like blueberries. Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay, so uh, let's go back up here. Elise says, I love catnip tea. Angela says, fun fact about insomnia. They say that if you're awake late at night, spirit is trying to deliver messages. Yep. And uh, Katie says, holy moly about catnip. Um, Angela says, or deities could be wanting to talk to you. Katie says, interesting, Angela. I'm working with someone on sleep right now. And Angela says, oh, how very interesting. Maybe recommend them a shadow work meditation or a guided meditation. And Russ says, what's the perfect herbal smoke to make meditation possible for those who have trouble with meditation? Okay, <clears throat> I would say two of the big ones that are on my table right now is Egyptian blue lotus and mugwort. I would say putting those together would really help. Also, mulin. Don't forget you, mulin, for, for the lungs. Um, oh, and Damiana. Actually, I think that would be the power trio. Uh, Damiana, Egyptian blue lotus, and mugwort. Don't forget the mulin for your lungs. But um, I have a blend on my website called Spirit Rising. And that was the blend that I created myself many years ago um, to like aid in my like meditations because I was still using guided meditations at that point I was having a hard time meditating on my own so I created my spirit rising blend and there is damiana and mugwort in that blend I just don't have Egyptian blue lotus in it but now that I've been working with the blue lotus I feel like that's really good for meditation too so you can either check out um because I do list the herbs that I use um, on my website so like if you wanted to make it yourself you could do that you, or you could purchase it but also if you happen to find um, blue leaf uh, Egyptian blue leaf or blue lotus damiana and mugwort I'd say it'd be pretty good <laughs> I'd say you'd be, yeah very good on that one um let's see let's go back here Katie says, yeah, I'm processing shadow work, but there's postpartum involved, three kids under three, upcoming school, et cetera. Whew, oh my goodness. Peg says, like a hot air balloon ride, up, up, and away. <laughs> and just said, oh gosh, maybe put them through it in Mother Goddess meditation. If they're open to it, Mama Goddess vibes would probably feel good for that. And Katie says, technically, there's not supposed to be patience on my natural plant. My dad was a very important uh patent attorney a thc should never have been patented it's natural botany and angela says also we all meditate without knowing it. i realize it when we vibe with our favorite song that's very true and russ says all oh, right egyptian blue lotus and mugwar okay and john says uh he needs to get some mulin i i find that to be kind of like an all-around just like good thing mullen mulin um and actually we have it grow wild all over here so like for me it's it's pretty easy to like you know harvest the seeds and like dry out the leaf and stuff like that so i can have my own meal in because i do try to utilize what's already here but i also try to help um like replant the plant so that i'm not just using up resources and not giving back so i i do pay attention to all our plants around here just to see like their health how they are they doing well is there any pests like getting to them um and uh yeah, with like uh, mulin, I like to kind of shake out their seeds sometimes and have them like replant so that we make more mulin, you know. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, having a little bit more here. And you know what? I think we'll do the super chats and super stickers now while I'm still 
sort of here. <laughs> um, okay, so I have the Jupiter Power Tarot, so we could use that one. But we could also use my Tanim or Oracle from my Pinoy sister in the Philippines. All right. Mabuhay, as they say. Hmm. That does feel nice. I'm like so super relaxed right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, super chat, super stickers are open um, for one card readings, card pulls, things like that. Um, you know what I was just thinking about uh, like the past couple of days is like I don't really have anybody around here anymore that I could practice my other languages on. I know that sounds really random and it's probably some of the smoke here. So my apologies. <laughs> but I was thinking about languages yesterday. Like I was brought up around so much language. I was brought up like learning multiple languages and like and I used to practice them kind of doing what I did like when I was an EL teacher, which I was for a very long time, um, like an EL English teacher, which is English language teacher. And most of my students were from uh, Iraq um, and some were from um, like Afghanistan. Uh, I had a few kids from Turkey. Um, I think we had one child who was from Iran, but for the most part, our kids were Iraqi kids um, and I ended up learning Arabic, like very base level Arabic, like um, Syrian, Syrian Arabic. And it was just so cool because I also know Spanish. And so my students were kind of half and half, like half my students were Iraqi and half my students were from Mexico. Um, and, you know, and I'm their, their English teacher. And so <laughs> the kids were always trying to figure out what ethnicity I was because they wanted to see like whose side I was on. Like the uh, kids that were from the Middle East were, were pretty sure that I was Middle Eastern, especially because of my last name. They're like Miss Egypto, like Miss Egypto is like Egyptian, obviously. So she's like, she's uh, like, she understands us. Like she's our teacher, you know? And then like some of our like kids from Mexico, they're like, no, obviously our teacher is Hispanic because her last name is Egipto, which is a Spanish name. So obviously she speaks Spanish. So sometimes I would be like, <laughs> the kids would be talking and they're just being silly, you know, like to see like, is the teacher like on my side or something? I don't know how kids are. They're just, they're goofy. And so sometimes I would tell them to be quiet, but in Arabic and in Spanish. And they would just be so confused because I would start speaking English, Spanish, Arabic, you know, and then they'd be like, wait, how do you know how to say that miss or they'd be like uh senora like wait all right wait where are you from <laughs> you're obviously not from the united states i'm like oh yeah i'm a, i'm an american girl they're like but how because <laughs> i would be silencio ish you know <laughs> and they were like oh my goodness it was so fun oh my gosh it was so fun playing with them um i miss my my el kids I think that was like the most fun I ever had teaching as I loved doing English language teaching. Um, and I just, I don't know, I loved being immersed into language and not only trying to teach them English, but having them teach me all these different languages from all over the world. So I thought it was excellent. Okay. Oh, it looks like we have some super stickers from our friend Kayla and John. So Kayla is uh, wanting a message from Eco, which I would be more than happy to do. And Russ says, with quantum healing uh, pods, med beds, you can download any language into your vocabulary. That would be rad. Um... <laughs> Katie says, Tara, dialing Tara. Oh, yeah, that's me. I'm over here. Okay. Um, Kayla, let's go with the Jupiter Power Tarot. Okay, so message from Eco. Okay, so let's tap into Eco. <laughs> okay, Eco for some reason is playing the song from um, Lamb Chop. I don't know if you remember in the 80s. Um, 
the like TV show with like the little sock puppet. And it's like, this is lamb chops, play along where kids come to play along. So Eco's coming in with that interesting um, TV show jingle. Let's see what else. Okay, so he was playing the lamb chop song, but it was also why, where, when all of these like feathers were falling from the sky. And I realized that he was like pointing to Frankie, um, your little birdie. And he was like so happy jumping around trying to like, like blow the, the feathers that were falling down on his nose. And it's just showing that he's so happy that you're taking care of Frankie. Like he, he really feels like this bird was meant to be in your life, that you guys were meant to help each other out. So he's like giving, basically, if Eco had thumbs, he'd be giving the thumbs up. Like, I am so happy for you. Like, this is a wonderful soul to have in, in your life. And also, like he was saying, knowing like how connected you are with animals, how thoughtful you are. Um, that you are a beautiful light in Frankie's life as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull a card. And we have the five of pentacles. Okay. Okay, so Eco is saying that... Um, he knows that even though you feel like you've gotten over Eco's passing, you know, that you can get messages from him, you feel him all around you. Um, sometimes you can swear that you've even maybe seen a glimpse of him in the house um, with your 3D eyes. And Eco says he knows that you've done a lot of healing, but there was still like a, a portion that gets really sad sometimes when because he's not here like physically on this plane but you know even if you do have knowledge that he's technically never left you you know that his energy always surrounds you and so Eco is saying that the reason Frankie came in at this time was to kind of help you with that healing um, to allow your heart to feel full again um, and still having room for more you know coming in so he's really happy that Frankie is there because Frankie does have that job. Like that is the agreement is to help you, you know, to heal through this and also to be, you know, a light in your partner's life as well. But also knowing that all the things that you're able to help Eco with, you're able to help Frankie with because they have a very, a very similar you know, even though they're different species, one being a dog and one being a bird, but their life experience was somewhat similar. And so you're able to help her in that realm, just like you're able to help Eco. Um, but Frankie's special quality is heart healing, like heart opening, heart healing. So Eco's very happy that you guys have found each other. And he says, I'm very supportive. Um, I feel like this is best for my person. Um, and he's just happy to see that you're happy. So let's see anything else. <laughs> no, he's just like, <sighs> like blowing the feathers as they like fall down on his nose. Like he's just having such a good time. He just is really happy for you. Like really, really, truly. Um, Aw. So he was connecting with Kayla. Um, Angela was saying, Mama Gaia statue for Kayla. It's okay, it's okay to grieve. It's just love that isn't sure where to go. You are so kind to the animals. It's fine to cry when they go. I do too know that they could uh, they could fly anywhere. They choose to stay with you. Amen. Aw, it's so nice. Um, oh, Angela's saying, here's a fun game for the chat. Let's pretend we can summon each other 
instead of dialing a phone, what items would you want to be summoned for with pick four? <laughs> she says, I'll start with Hershey's chocolate bars, a Gaia or angel statue, a cup of sweet tea, and a feather for me. Kayla said, thank you, Tara. That made me cry. It just, you know, I mean, probably happy tears because um, eco just seems so playful and joyful in, in that image. So thank you for letting me connect to him as always. All righty. Um, oh, our buddy, John. John, did you have a particular question or did you want to leave it open-ended? And uh, Katie says, I know that it's love that doesn't know where to go. Um, jaw on the floor. I need to pick it up. <laughs> okay, give these a good shuffle, shuffle. I think I'll have a little bit more tea. Okay, now that my herbal smoke has had time to kind of settle in, um, of course, I do feel the cannabis. There's that. Um, but there's like a minty feeling, I guess, on my skin. Um, so like very cooling, like actual physical cooling effect and very soothing. So I would say I'm pretty, pretty mellow right now. Um, and just said, no problem. Hugs. John said, a message from smoke as prayer. Oh, okay. Okay, so message from smoke as prayer. So let's pull. Hmm, actually, you know what? For that, I'm pulled to the Tannin Oracle. So let's do that one. Um, Katie says, Tara's back, y'all. Um, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> All right, so a message from smoke as prayer. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. This has uh, got quite the name to it. It's called a S Spanish dancing girl, uh, Ranthera. And this is a type of plant in the Philippines. Um, and it says reduce. So let's dive into this one. Okay, so I was seeing this image of like first like a like me with the pipe, you know, like seeing the the smoke coming from the pipe and then you know the smoke coming from the breath. But then I was also just seeing the breath. Um, and smoke was pointing to like the the ego, belief that um that we can oh how do i put this into words because i feel like this is coming from your higher higher self like um pretty up there in dimension so okay let me just put this together okay so Sometimes the, the ego can have us believe that when we are, let's say, giving smoke in prayer, kind of like, you know, I, I do with this little pipe here and things like that is I have put together my magic. I've put together these herbs and I'm offering something up, you know, my breath, but also the herbal allies in connection with that breath. And they said sometimes the ego can get hooked on um seeing the smoke as being more powerful than our own breath, mainly, you know, everything we have in our own lungs, that somehow we need something else. We need something more, uh, that sometimes we need these, um, like outside allies to give more meaning to our breath. Um, and although it's okay, to offer up smoke in this way, to work with the herbal allies in this way, 
just to understand that this 3D representation is also a representation of what's happening energetically. Um, and so not to discount your own breath when you're doing breath work, when you're doing meditation, that we're not always using smoke for that, but it's just as powerful. It's just as important. Actually, it's even more powerful because it's fully just your intention and you're just fully working with energy rather than working with something tangible or something material. So... And by the way, when I was talking about like up there in dimensions for your higher self, I'm getting like 13D. <laughs> like, um, I, I know that our higher self is in all dimensions. You know, obviously, you know, it could be in six, seven, eight, nine. But that version of your higher self that I was tapping into was like, and that could be part of the Damiana leaf, <laughs> you know, where it's like really got my third eye way open right now. Um, so I see probably just more of your frequency than I normally see. Um, and yeah, it was this like 13th dimensional being, which is where my higher self <laughs> is from. Um, and it's just like its messages were just so high vibe and its frequency so high, like my ears were ringing. And I, it was, it was really hard to put it into like 3D words, uh, but that's the best I could do, I would say. Um, John says that ex explains my higher self's red eyes. <laughs> Nice. It says, this reflects my practice for clearing and putting intention into my tarot decks before reading. Ah, oh, this is just breath. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's what your higher self was trying to show that your, your breath in itself is a powerful thing. And um, sure, we can use smoke and things like that. But really, the most powerful thing is the breath itself because technically you are the plants and you are the smoke so you wouldn't also need its 3d representation if that makes sense but man whoo <laughs> you're high viber man <laughs> that is so rad okay uh let's see katie has said amazing and just says take time to breathe into joy the experience and play remember you are strong um the one the power is your in the smoke is just one way to relax to see it that way amen and you know who i was just noticing back there i don't know if you guys saw her but that was miss squirrel she was standing up by the creek oh our little chipmunk and our squirrel and miss squirrel's children have all been running around <laughs> it's been balls. All righty. Okay, so I think that was our super chats and super stickers for today. Let me know if there are any other questions that you guys may have for super chats, for stickers. Angela says, I see a figure behind your right shoulder. A bit, uh, there's this big people shape around the right shoulder. Let me see if I could see it through the camera instead of looking behind me. Hmm, you know, I feel, oh, you're very welcome, John. I feel like as of a couple of days ago, anytime I'm doing my readings or tapping in, like I, I'm normally pretty good at like blocking out other energies so I can just focus on the person that I'm reading for giving the messages. But now it feels like not only, you know, am I giving messages and tapping in, but also like everything <laughs> is like looking like I can just sense all the spirits that are around all the ETs and things like that. And um, I've just been noticing that the past few days and I'm just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> It's getting crowded in here. I'm just trying to read for this one person. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, it wouldn't surprise me that there's uh, folks standing back there. Peg says, thank you, Tara. Thank you, fams. And Russ says, Angela, it's 2.10 Eastern Standard Time. And here in Arizona, we are going on Pacific Standard Time right now because we don't change our time. Here in Arizona so we're just um 
I would say the closest time is Pacific Standard. So that's where we are. So we just have to change like where we say our time zone is, but we don't actually change our time. So, <laughs> okay, I'm going to do a couple little bit more smokes and then we will go into our channel guided meditation. Not sure who we are going to channel <laughs> um, or like what type of meditation it will be. Maybe we can pull a card on it and then we'll tap in. So and it is getting kind of cold right now that wind is a cold hmm. yes yes i would say that's a pretty good smoke um and if you were going to be doing some meditation this would be a good smoke to use it for i think Yeah, yeah, pretty good, pretty good, if I do say so myself. Alrighty, so like I said, um, I'll try to offer this up in my shop if anybody wants this particular blend, the live chat blend. <laughs> um, otherwise, I'm going to put some aside for work with Beltane, but also putting in the atten intention that, like, as um, our friend John's reading had said, that I understand that my breath is the most important part of this, you know, intention or offering. So, okay. So let's move me out of the way. And then we'll pull a card and I'll kind of focus it back here where it's a much lovelier point of view than my face. <laughs> and we'll do our channeled guided meditation. Okay. So let's pull a card. We have the Banu flower fight. Beautiful flower. Um, Katie says, may the channeled meditation speak to each one here in a way that offers what is needed at this time. Yes, I agree with Angela. Amen. Okay, so fight. Hmm. So what I'm getting for the meditation that we're going to dive into is not seeing the ego as the enemy. So basically not to have the internal fight, but how to bring the two, our higher self and our ego into understanding in a way that they can be utilized for our best and highest good, for our healing. How can the higher self utilize the ego for healing um, how do i not try to create divide and separation within myself um, so that i aid in not having divide and separation in my reality you know maybe amongst other humans so i feel this is more um a bringing the self into wholeness and into harmony with itself rather than to be divided with itself or at war with itself um, so yeah, okay, so that's the meditation I'm feeling for today. I am going to have a little bit more water over here. Okie dokie. All right, so let's move this. Uh, Katie says hugs to all the healers. Elisa says thanks. This was fun. Uh, no, it's the limited edition live chat blend. <laughs> yes, there we go. It's the limited edition live chat blend. Okay. So let me just zoom in for you guys. There we go. Much better image. All right. Okay. So go ahead and find yourself a nice, comfortable place. You can be outdoors or indoors. You can be laying on a bed, seated in a chair, perhaps lying against the trunk of a tree. And as you get yourself nice and comfortable, go ahead and bring your awareness to your breath. Feeling the inhalations and the exhalations 
feeling the rise and fall of the chest. And just witnessing how effortless the breath moves in the body in and out, in and out. Something seemingly so gentle, yet powerful enough to activate and bring to life the human machine. And yet with ease, we continue breathing in and out, in and out. And as we marvel at the breath, we marvel at our own innate power, our soul, and the vessel that we have incarnated in. Let us then imagine how we see our soul as a standing in a room with us yet also imagining how our ego might look. And here we have two aspects of the same vessel. On one side, the vision of your soul, and on the other, the vision of your ego. And take a moment to reflect on how you have these two aspects of the self portrayed. Have you assigned them a particular energy color? Do they have a particular shape? Are they humanoid? Does it resemble light? Do they look at like different versions of yourself when you look in the mirror. Your portrayal of this aspect of yourself can give you great insight into how you feel about this aspect of yourself. And now that you have both in the room, ask your higher self your soul at this time, as you all take a seat, ask it how it can help you to heal at this time. What is its messages for you? And as you take the time, taken this information, we then turn our attention toward our ego. How is the ego trying to protect or help you at this time? What is its messages for you? Take the time to incorporate these messages. And after you've given yourself a bit, allow the ego and the higher self, the soul, to have a chat. What is the strength of each aspect of you? How can they help each other, in your healing, in your growth, in your ultimate ascension. And as they continue to converse, ask them in what way they 
might be hindering that ascension? What is the light and the shadow? How might their seeing at odds hinder your own growth and healing? How can they learn to work together instead of seeing themselves as two separate factions? How can the two become one? in order to help you heal, in order to help you grow. And in this moment, I want you now to imagine that the soul that you have envisioned and the ego who you've brought to life see See them now merge as one, two aspects of the whole, perhaps two different missions, yet finding a common ground to aid in your ascension and your healing and your soul growth. Thank yourself in gratitude and love. And imagine a beautiful ball of white light that you now integrate into your heart space with this knowledge that you have offered, just offered yourself. With this time that you've given to yourself to understand your aspect and gain a new perspective. And when you are ready, having breathed in this light and soaked it in every aspect, you can bring your awareness back into your body. You can wiggle your fingers and toes. And when you feel ready, Go ahead and have yourself a little stretch and open your eyes. <sighs> all right. All right, all right. Thank you guys for hanging out today in today's chat. <laughs> I hope you guys had a lot of fun. Thank you so much for everybody who participated in the creation of our little 420 tarot spread. Uh, I hope that for those who partake, that you have yourself a nice 420. Um, and for those who are just utilizing the energy, I hope you have a great day as well. Uh, thank you for everybody who joined me in the creation of our little limited edition live chat smoke blend. <laughs> um, and everybody who had a maybe a puff along with me, thank you to my super chats and super stickers. Uh, thank you, everybody, for all of your messages and all of the wisdom that you shared. Thank you for being here. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I'm going to finish off my little pipe and uh, work on a few readings that I have for today. And uh, yeah, have a beautiful, beautiful week. Peace, love, and chicken grease. Mwah! Peace out. Bye, guys. <laughs>